I really wanted to make him proud. And I never had the opportunity to meet Merle. I was really looking forward to it, but knew through some friends and, uh, that had connected us to be able to sing on his record that, that he knew who we were. And, um, and I, I then got to meet him when he played in the studio with him. And, but Becky and I both, when we sang on the Mac and Merle record, which is fabulous, by the way, we're just so excited to, to get to meet him one day. And, but, you know, we're going to meet him in heaven. And I'm looking forward to the that. The fans probably don't understand how you can sit there and say, I sang on his record, but I never <laughs> met the man. <laughs> Explain yeah. that a little bit. Technology. Um, well, you know, he went. He was able to do all his lead vocals, and then they hired us to come in. I don't know. Did we get paid for that? I didn't need any money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I actually did. I would have done it for free now that it's all over with. I would have paid him. <laughs> um, but, you know, then, then they ask you to come in and record the background vocals, and nowadays you can do it. How, you can even sing the backgrounds first if you want to. Uh, that doesn't sound very good, but it really was an honor. I, I've been a huge Merle Haggard fan my whole life, and, um, and I, I really knew walking into the studio both times that, that I was one of the luckiest people in the world to have that opportunity and to feel so honored and, and fortunate that he actually wanted us to sing on it. I mean, that, I can't even tell you how that just makes my heart smile. You know, how that started was, uh, I remember him calling me to the back of the bus on a tour, and he said, son, come here and listen to this. And it was y'all's record. And, he, and it brought tears to his eyes. He was mm -hmm. just, you know, many know that. And, oh, yeah. and of course, we always yeah, and sit there. He sit back there for hours. Even if he wanted to go do something else, I mean, he, he just, he loved y'all. Wow. Oh, Marty, you said something interesting. I said to Buddy, did you tell him how to sing in the studio? And I heard you say under your breath that James Brown? James Stroud. Oh, James Stroud. <laughs> oh, I thought you... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta turn the hearing aid up a little bit here. <laughs> I was gonna say, what did James Brown tell him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill. I, hey, Bill. I got to tell y'all one little thing. We went to, I was, <laughs> I, was playing, I was playing the Shy Clown out in Sparks, Nevada, and, and the Hag was playing the, the Harris. And so the phone rang, and, and, it, and I thought it was Tommy Collins. So I just like Tommy on the phone. And he's, he said, come on over here. I said, come on over to the, to the room. So I, I got over there, and we started passing the guitar back and forth in a little bit, and we, and he'd sing a little something. I'd say, oh, yeah, you got that from Lefty's song, whatever it was. And I'd sing, they'd say, oh, yeah, well, Lefty did that on that, whatever. And so we'd pass the guitar back and forth. And, and I had just signed with Buck Owens. And Buck was my producer with, with Capitol, I believe. So I was looking for songs anyway. I was always going to look for songs. And Hag had them all. Hag always had more songs than he needed. We had none. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and so there was this song. And he said, David, i got to play you something. So he played me this song. So that's the way it was in 51. And I, I listened to it. I couldn't believe it. Hank and Lefty crowded every I couldn't believe it. I said, great. And I said, Merle, I got to have that song. And Merle said, well, he said, I, 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 David, it's my next single. <laughs> I said, I can't help it. <laughs> I got to have that song. And he said, you can't have that song. You, you know how you get, you can't not have that song. And he said, uh, I, I said, I, I, he, he said, I'll do something. He said, I'll, I'll send you, he said, I just finished my project. I'll send you 10 great songs. He said, I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee that six, at least six of those are hits. I said, well, Merle, underline those six. <laughs> because sure as heck, I'm going to do them other ones. <laughs> but and he did send us one, the song called Irma, I Love Irma Jackson Till I Die. And then, I don't know if you remember, you remember the song, just incredible song, the way he did it was incredible. The way I ended up doing me and Buck was not as incredible. <laughs> and Tony Booth, you did it. Yes, yes I did. Great song, buddy. You just, you, you did a great job. On Get it. your guitar and do the, the song about 1951. Okay, yeah, that okay. That is an yeah. absolute classic song. <laughs> did, when you guys were growing up and around the house, did, did Dad pick up the guitar? Was he always oh, yeah. playing and singing or? Was he one of those people that never played when he was? No, no, no. I'll, I'll start and you guys finish. Well, I'll um, start. You start finishing and all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit here. I yeah, that's here uh, <laughs> learning how to play rhythm. That was my um, that was my training tool because Dad, he, all he wanted to do was play lead. You know, he didn't like he didn't sing that much. He just played. That's all he wanted to do around the house. And when Leona was with him, 
between me and Leona, we could cover the rhythm. Leona would just sing, or I would, but Dad would do um, the picking. And that's probably where I learned to play correct flogging rhythm. And, um, well, I, I, well, I'm not that dang good at it, but I'm, you know, I'm better than I used to be. But anyway, um, but yeah, we played all the time. Um, he usually let everybody else sing, though. You know, he wanted that's to play interesting. the guitar thing. Bill, how Love great that, that his his sons embrace him as, you know, not only an, an artist. I talked to Ronnie Robbins at one time, and he said he tried to get away from his father, Marty Robbins. He, he didn't want to sing like him. He didn't want to be uh, in any way connected. He wanted to do, I want to be my own artist. And, and how wonderful that and, his sons and you embrace him. Like and he does. Yeah, it's like, like you can't work. deny <laughs> that. Yeah. It is so, I mean, it's so heartwarming to see you embrace your father. We all loved him, but you guys really, you know, to have that personal experience. Yeah. That's very special. I tried my best to get to prison, but they just wouldn't let me out. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't find you. You were under the bus. Uh, well, no, uh, actually, M M Merle paid to get me out of it, so. One of the last albums that Merle did was he, what well, he and I did together, and Ronnie produced that, Ronnie Reno here, and a lot of these folks were on it, you know, it was a real, real hoot. Yes, it was. It was a, it was a favorite time for me to, to be with Merle, and, and like Buddy said, get the creative juices flowing and everything, and, and I was just listening to Vince and, and, uh, and uh, um, talking about being, singing on it, and it was wonderful. He just just did a great job on on that song, Vince. Uh, and of course, the Isaacs, as always, did a wonderful job on it. You know, Sonia. And I, I do have to say, Sonia's such a great singer that we actually laid down her high part and Merle's low part, and then sent it to Vince. And uh, he, it was how many people can do that? Because uh, then three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. And hats off to you guys. That's so great. Yeah. Lay it on us, David. You ready for this? I am. Sixty-six, still a narrow two-lane highway. Very true was the man who ran the show That bad Korean war was just beginning And I was just three years too young to go Country music hadn't gone to New York City the service man was proud of what he'd done Hank and left the crowded every Jude box That's the way it was, 51 There's so much about the good old days I love to tell there's folks around I know still remember oh well slow dancing close together when a ballad play cause a thing called rock and roll yet to come big year for a driving freshly called out that's the way it was in 51 
when a bad thing Cause a thing called rock and roll yet to come Big year for a driving restaurant call Hey, that's the way it was in 51 Yeah, Hank and Lefty crowded every jukebox Hey, <laughs> that's the way it was in 51 David Frizzell, great job, man. Of course, Merle Haggard is the, the writer of that song. We've been talking to you guys, but every one of you sings and performs. I think we need to get some music out of the, the Haggard boys. Yeah, boy. Marty, I noticed the song that you picked to sing is uh, one of your dad's classics called Mama's Hungry Eyes. Merle wrote a lot about his mama. Mama tried, Mama's Hungry Eyes, a lot about family. I, I've got to believe... He and his mom were, were pretty close. Uh, they, they obviously were. Um, I can honestly say that my grandma and I were probably the closest in the family. Um, my grandma raised me when, when my dad was still out raising hell, okay? <laughs> and uh, raised us, us kids. Um, grandma Haggard, I, I've always believed she was the greatest woman I'd ever known in my life. And then I met my wife. And then she's, <laughs> grandma, my grandma would have loved the, my wife. But my grandma Haggard and I were very, very close, and our, and the tie that really bound us was Jesus. We both have a undying love for Jesus. And um, but grandma, she taught me the same thing she taught him. He went to prison, I didn't, so it definitely was his fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he loved his mama, and I'm thankful that she lived long enough to see him turn his life around because grandma never did give up on him, and she kept loving him, kept praying for him, and he finally made it, and. She went to her grave so proud of her boy. I only met her one time, but I came away from that meeting thinking that this is the kindest, most gentle woman. I, you know, you'd expect maybe, hey, I'm Merle Haggard's mom, you know, none of that. Jesus in a skirt, that's what she was. Goodness, what a beautiful description. Yeah. Yeah. She was a great lady. Jesus in a skirt. How about singing the song for I'll us? try. All right. I've been sick. I'll stop it. <laughs> Grandma, I'll oh, take care of you. Hang on, I need a guitar. <laughs> Mari, take your guitar with you. <laughs> <laughs> that one there. <laughs> uh, all right, boys. A canvas covered cabin in a crowd. They were king. Stand out in this memory. I revive. Cause my daddy raised a family there with two hard working hands and tried to feed my mama's hungry eyes. He dreamed of something better And my mother's faith was strong And us kids were just too young To realize That another class of people Put us somewhere just below One more reason for my mama's hungry eyes. Mom never had the luxury she wanted, but it wasn't cause my daddy didn't try. She only For my mama's 
hungry eyes I remember daddy praying for a better way of life but I don't recall a change of any size just a little loss of courage as their age began to show and more sadness in my mama's hungry eyes mom never had the luxury she wanted but it wasn't For my mama's hungry eyes Yeah, I still recall my mama's hungry eyes Part of the testament to uh, not only your performance, but to the, the quality and the endurance of your dad's songs. I looked around the room. There wasn't anybody in here wasn't singing along or mouthing the words because we all know them. I know. And I guarantee you the people at home were doing the same thing because those songs are part of the fabric of our lives. I, um, you know, I do, I've been doing a little tribute show for my dad for about five years, long before he got sick. Your dad or our dad? That uh, was my dad. <laughs> He's my dad. Fine, you can have him. And, but, you know, I've, I've had my own career for 20 years before that. And I've always done my own things. And, um, you know, obviously I was trying to build my own career. But somewhere along the way, you know, uh, I love my dad. And, um, and good grief, you have to be brain dead not to love his music. You know, and I thought, well, everybody else is singing, and why not me? You know, and I wanted to keep his music and him alive as long as I'm alive. And um, and country music right now, real country music, the way I grew up. Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of dying out, you know. And um, but anyway, I've been doing this tribute thing to Dad, and um, for the last five, six years, and I got to experience firsthand the people. What you just said a while ago were people, you know. It's, it's a memory trip for these people. You know, it's, it's like a family member with these people. And I'm talking big old cowboys, you know, breaking down in tears. And, and, and that's what music is. It's, it takes somebody back to a moment in their life. You know, it's a pretty important gift to give somebody a shelter in the storm in this life we live. You know, until we get home to heaven, this is a tough existence. And by George, the Father gave us music to give us a little bit of a shelter. And boy, he never gave nobody a better shelter than Merle Haggard, okay? It's a great place to go when you need to get in and out of the rain. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Somebody write that down. <laughs> Woo. Noel, I noticed you're going to sing The Lonesome Fugitive. Yeah, I want to go back to Grandma. Uh, <laughs> she used to take us out, and she would make me bows and arrows, but at the same time, she was pick a, picking out... Uh, Willow switches, in case, you, <laughs> in case you got out of line. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. She, she picked out some nice ones, but. Uh. My question to you was going to be about that <laughs> lonesome Let me fugitive. say something before I start talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was just going to ask you because, I mean, yes, the sir. subject's come up. It's well documented that Merle spent some time in prison. Yeah. Did he ever talk about that? Did he talk to you guys about it? Did he say, don't do what I did? His was cellmate there about was uh, Bob Teagues, and Bob had a brother named Noel. That's who I'm named after, so he really didn't talk a whole lot about it. Um, uh, you know, in private, and I think that's where it needs to remain. I, uh, you know, I'm not going to... He didn't talk about it. He sung about it. it. He did what? He sung about it. He sung he about it rather than talk about it. He was as honest it. with everybody else as he was with us. That's what made him... 
who he was. I think. It, uh, it scared the shh out of him. It made him, I think, you know, he, you know, as he as he doesn't assume, he just didn't want to do that. He, he, you know, in there he decided that he wasn't going to do that no more. Mm -hmm. He was going to do something. That, that um, period of his life scarred him for life. Um, I, I wrote a song about my dad one time called A Different Kind of Prison Where He's Doing Time. And um, that particular situation, I don't think he ever got out of prison. I really don't. Um, I can only imagine San Quentin prison in the 50s. I, I've, been a, I've been to a lot of prisons. I've been in that when I was doing ministry and Jesus stuff. And, you know, it's a dark place. And um, I, I can, oh, Dad would refuse to talk about it. And you know what? I would imagine he was trying real hard to forget it. But I'll bet it was impossible to do. The sadness in my dad singing in his songs, um, he, he's the mouthpiece for the pain, sorrows, and sufferings of this world. And um, he, he, he has a level of hurt in him that the songs don't cover, trust me. And I'm, but I am so thankful. He, he, the memories are gone now. Okay? He don't know no more about no stinking prison no more. Noah, how about a song? Sir? How about the song? What's that? Song. <laughs> the one that says on this sheet that Noel Haggard's oh, gonna sure. sing yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea what you're talking about. I was listening to Marty. I was listening to Marty talk about his dad. <laughs> yeah. I know you, right? I, I'm not sure. Well, it's a oh, good now thing we're gonna get to hear Ben Pick. <laughs> Yep, sure are. What are we doing, Benny? I don't know. What are we doing? I have no idea. If you don't plug that electric guitar in, you better, hey, it looks really weird. You sit over there. I'll do this, okay? <laughs> In the last 53 years, I've been able to do my own thing, okay? Y'all sound like us. <laughs> yeah, family. How about a nice hand from Marty Haggard, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Leaving always on my mind Home is never home to me at any time Every front door found me hoping Outside the back door open There just had to be an exit For the running kind Within me there's a prison Surrounding me alone As real as any dungeon With your walls of stone I know running's not the answer Running's been my nature A part of me that keeps me moving on I was born a running kind Leaving always on my mind And home was never home to me at any time Every front door found me open Outside the back door open A part of me that keeps me moving on Mama used to pray my 
crops would fail And now I'm a hunted fugitive With just two ways I'd run the law or spend my life in jail I'd like to settle down A fugitive must be a rolling stone Down every road there's always one more city Well I'm on the run, the highway is my home Next band, please. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I had Come thought on, I... Come on, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a matter of... I opinion. thought I'd given some false information there, saying we're going to do a fugitive, and then uh, you saved me, Ben. Thank I you. saved you. I saved you. <laughs> Man, that, that tone on that guitar, uh, we've heard that a few times in I our lives. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, my goodness gracious. How about you doing, Mike? All right. They were so much in love with life Happy in every way The love the movie began with Somehow got lost in the play Like a fire burning out of control We got caught up the actors roll And you cried on my shoulder When it came to an end But that's all in the movies It won't happen to us I know That's all in the movies so baby, don't cry That's all in the movies It won't happen to us, I know That's all in the movies Just a bad picture show And the great band. Ben, I got to ask you, because uh, you're, you're what, 20? 20, 23. 23 years old. 
Do you get pressure, do you feel pressure from people your age to play more of the contemporary kind of music, or do you just stand up and say, look, I'm just... I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what I got to do, and if they like it, they like it. So you're going to you're going to continue to try to perpetuate your oh, dad's yeah. music and his late. Do you yeah. write? Are you I a do. writer? I do. I'm starting, starting. So, got a few songs I've written, and uh, I don't know if they're any good yet. <laughs> well, man, somebody your age and with your talent could uh, could really be a shot in the arm for traditional country yeah. music. So you stick to it. And you're a Thank you're so terrific Thank man. You. Thank Absolutely. You. Wow. Well, look who I'm trying to be. <laughs> Daryl Singletary, I did a, a serious XM uh, interview with, with Merle uh, several years before he passed away. And I asked him in the course of that interview, I said, of all the Merle Haggard songs, I said, I hate to ask you this question because I don't like people asking me this question. I said, what's your favorite? of all your songs that you've written and recorded. And the song that you're gonna sing is what he told me was his favorite. Did you ever talk with him about that? I never did, but it's always been my favorite Merle Haggard You do this on the Opry a lot yeah, when you yeah. come guest with us. Yeah, we do it every night in our live show on the road too. What do you think it is about the song that, I, I know it speaks to entertainers. Yeah, but, I think that's why I see more than anything is it just, uh, you know, sometimes we don't feel like doing it but uh, we have to uh, put on that old instamatic grin and go out there and make it happen. How about singing it for us? I'd love to. Yeah, the song's called Footlights. On. One of the great Merle Haggard songs. Most 
most men only dream of I make my living writing songs and singing them Singletary. Yeah, he made his living writing songs and singing them, and we're celebrating his life. Merle Haggard, we need to take a break. We'll be back. 